Welcome to the Starter Girls podcast, the show dedicated to the starter girl. She's an achiever. She's a creator. She's a magic maker. She's a dreamer. And she is doing all the things. I'm your host, Jennifer Loading, and welcome to this episode. All right, here we are. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Starter Girls podcast. I'm so excited today to have my guest coming in. Oh my gosh, from across the world. It's so exciting to have her here today, Naomi Johnson. She is the founder and owner of The Profile Company. And I went on her site today to check some more info out on her because she's just doing amazing things. But what she does is she helps individuals position themselves using LinkedIn to give make them be the go-to expert in their industry. And so I'm so excited to welcome her to the show today and chat with her. It's going to be so much fun. So Naomi, welcome to the Starter Girls. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is going to be so much fun. So yeah, I went to your site this morning because I was like, I know you and I had this like powerful conversation, but I wanted to get in there. I'm like, I got to re, re, you know, look at my notes again mm-hmm. and see who this amazing woman is. And so I am so excited to have you here today and I want to say thank you so much for chiming in wherever from your, from your other side of the world. Yes. The other side of the world in the South of England. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So much fun. So much fun. All right. So tell us a little bit about the profile company. Give us kind of a run through of just what this company, what you're doing with this company. Mm, Yeah. So the the profile company um, is eight years old now, actually. So I write people's LinkedIn profiles to position them as the go-to expert in their industry. So prospects come to them pre-sold and ready to buy. Um, And pretty much I work with individuals who are experts in their topic that want clients to come to them effortlessly and easily um, and to become the only person that their prospects want to work with. Um, And so with that, I I write the LinkedIn profile for people that really sums up what they do, really packs a punch, that when they're sharing content or sending people inbox messages, it's actually when, because everything you do when you do those things, people come back to your profile. Is your profile really grabbing people's attention, really outlining what you do and how you do it, and then connecting with your sales funnel? And interestingly enough, a lot of small businesses, they don't connect with their sales funnel. They don't have the sales funnel in place. They don't have a sales process. And they're missing some vital elements inside the business. So I actually coach people to get those elements into the business so that the LinkedIn profile and any other marketing they do actually starts working for them. So eight years you've been in business. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> I know. I didn't realize. Crazy. She, yeah, I didn't realize you've been around that long. So that's awesome. Kudos to you. Yeah, 10 years in the LinkedIn space. Um, I was saying LinkedIn training before. And uh, one of the things we did to get people on the phone to actually talk to us to come to our training sessions was to actually offer them a LinkedIn profile uh, review. And I discovered that after doing it for two years, talking to about 20 people a week, that not only do people not... Um, implement what was said but they were faith they they didn't have the time they were too close to their own business to see it objectively and they weren't wordsmiths so I said do you know what I think I'll jump out of this other organization and offer to actually do it for them and write the uh, profile for them and so I did that's how I got started Um, and about 18 months in I realized that I was actually feeding people too many answers during the 90 minute interview and actually like those elements that I mentioned before needed more space and time for them to work it out what the answer should be rather than just coming up with it they didn't have ownership over it so that's when about 18 months later the coaching program came into place yeah i like that you said the ownership part because i as you know i'm a coach as well i do different kind of coaching but one of the things that i always talk about is the difference between a consultant and a coach and i just had this conversation with a potential client that i was taking on and so i always like to you know get really clear about what are you looking for are you looking for that consultant are you looking for that coach because as you mentioned a minute ago it's about the ownership and mm-hmm. you know when a consultant comes in they tell you exactly all the steps to take right and i think coaches we kind of do that but we let the ownership process be theirs because at the end of the day, they have to make the decisions, right? And they have to own it. Yeah. And so I love that you said that. Yeah. They always have to learn to trust their own intuition. And if we come in all guns blazing, telling them what to do and it doesn't fit right and sit right for them, we're overriding their sense of self-trust and their self-knowledge. So I will make lots of suggestions. And then I often say, well, all the time I say, sit with it for a week. If you're still talking about it next week, I know that that's landed with you and it feels right. Um, and if, it, if they're not, they'll know a week later, that doesn't sit with me. No, 
Um, it's that's so so important. Otherwise, you're just trampling people, <laughs> especially yeah. in our business. Like- we're very individual, you know, very sensitive individual what people do. So yeah. I like your choice of words. I like the landing and I like all that. Sit with it. It's great. It's great. It's, it's funny how we all have our, our different, we all kind of have the same messaging, but we use different language to articulate what we're trying to come across. Right. So I love it. I yeah. think it's great. And I agree with you. It, it's, you know, I do the same thing. I was working with a client the other day and not to get into all, I don't want to talk about the, you know, get into all the specifics of it, but you know, it's the same thing that I do with mine too. It's like, Hey, take these ideas now, go home with them. And I want you to brainstorm what we've talked about and see what feels right. You know, sometimes we understand that there's going to be some fear in that. And they also have to recognize that some of those blocks may be limiting beliefs that are stepping in the way. But you kind of know if you're having a lot of like, I call it discourse with something that you're mm-hmm. trying to do, just a lot of it sitting there. It's probably not sitting well, right? It's yeah. just, it's probably not the right thing to do. So I, I like that you're, you're coming from that angle of, hey, you have to take ownership of it, you know, and, and you're going to know. And, and I think mm-hmm. the more that you get in tune with your intuition, right, and that comes through decision making, trusting your decision, I think the more you get in tune with that, the easier it is to recognize when something's not sitting well, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just because you might not be doing so well and somebody else is doing better, just because you see that they are doing better does not mean to say they have enough knowledge or insight to speak into your life and how you, how you should be doing it. And I think sometimes we just give away too much of our power um in that respect like oh that person must know better they're doing better than me and we talk to the seminar Mm. leader we listen to the person on the stage thinking they've got this kudos but they can't know our business the way we know our business and they're not going to be here tomorrow with us and so we have to trust ourselves with this you know if it feels right it feels right if it doesn't yeah check in like is it a fear of growing a fear of all different you know the fears that come up is it that or is it actually this just isn't because this is going to beat you out of shape, you know? Yeah, this is good, Naomi. We're going to get onto that LinkedIn, but I have something to add to that that I want to mention because having come from the network marketing space for as long as I did, I shared, I think, that with you off camera, yeah. but I went to events, you know, multiple events of a year when I was in leadership position. I mean, sometimes that was four or five, six different events. We had like, you know, the made three major events a year, but then there would be all the smaller things that would come up. And it was so funny because when I remember when I first went in, you know, of course I would go to these events and I'd pull out my notepad and, and we'd be in these first some of these for days and I'd be writing notes down, writing notes, writing notes, all these notes. Right. And then I'd get home and I'd just be absolutely overwhelmed with all of the notes I'd taken because this person said to do this and this person said to do this and this Mm -hmm. person said to do this. And they were all experts, right? Because that's why they were up there pouring into us. Right. And then somewhere along the way, I learned that no, 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 we don't do that. No, no, no. So I kind of adopted a new idea when I would go into these events that I would go in and I'm not going to go in there and take a bunch of notes because I knew I knew my one, my capacity, how much I was going to retain. I also knew I wasn't stupid enough to believe I was going to look at those notes again. So I wasn't going to waste my time. <laughs> but what I would do is I would go into those events and I would try to find one piece of information out of that event that I could take and I could take it home and maybe not do it exactly the way they said to do it, but take it in and brainstorm on it with what I feel okay with and mesh the two together. So yeah. it really freed me to, to one, take ownership of my decision, but also to say, Hey, there's a lot of really good ideas out there. Now, how can I bring those in and mesh them in with what I'm doing already? Right. And so that was kind of like this big, aha, that every time I would go into an event, I'm like, we're not going to do that. We're not going to torture ourselves and do all that. <laughs> yeah. And also I think they, they come from us place as well as we know what's best and you're struggling. Um, and I have to really shut my ears off and counteract every assumption that comes through like that and say, actually, I'm sold out. I'm fine. Um, and choose what messaging I'm taking on. It's, oh, this is so difficult. I know this is confusing, but you will get there. No, I'm already here. I just want to know what you're talking about YouTube today. What's the latest of this, you know? Um, So you do have to be so careful. And I've seen, I've seen people give away their power to every type of certain type of person, um, having them reinvent the wheel for them. And I'm like, okay, what's your association with white males? Like white males of this age, why do you keep giving your your, your power to them? Um, I've had clients that have done all the groundwork with me and we've tested every assumption and really built it out gone to a conference with somebody who you know is making millions because he's he he sells from the stage and has 200 clients a year and therefore it adds up to millions must know what they're talking about and reinvent 
their whole business in one weekend. And I've heard the pitch and I'm like, okay, here's 18 reasons why that's just off. And you can't do it that quickly. Um, and it's and one of the things I'm really clear to work with my clients is, is we have that down now. That is what that is. These are the bits you can reinvent in and you're still growing in. And these bits are the bits that you've determined. These are the foundations you are standing on. Do not let anyone move this. Um, unless they're exceptionally qualified and let's test it before you move it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. Because we end, we end up undermining ourselves way too much. And that's when, um, you know, we falter the business. And when we falter, the business falters. Um, yeah. So tr- learning to trust your gut and trust yourself is so important. Yeah, that's so good, Naomi. Okay, well, if anybody, you know, if they didn't get anything out of this episode today, there you go. <laughs> the message for the day, trust your gut, trust yourself, right? I love it. Yeah. I love it. So yeah. let's talk about LinkedIn a little bit because you mm-hmm. are like, the, you know, the pro on this. And I want to know what is like the, what is the big thing that people are like missing? Like, what are they not doing on these LinkedIn profiles? Uh, yeah, again, do you know what? Everything we just said pulls into this. They, number one, People think that they don't know how to use the platform. And so they're always seeking. They're always going on the next webinar to listen to the next person. Actually, they do know how to use the platform. It's simple skills of networking and leveraging trust. How did we do business before LinkedIn came along? If you look at the best salespeople, how they spoke to people, how they asked for introductions, how they found new connections, all of those things. LinkedIn is all of that on steroids. And they, we forget that. And when I do my LinkedIn surgeries, I say to people, I'm going to tell you what the answer is and I'm going to open it up to the floor for everybody else to tell you what they think the answer is. Because this isn't just about LinkedIn. This is about business relationships. Um, and you, you know, either you know that or you're growing in that, but it, that's what it's about. The other thing is, is there's a lot of emphasis put on things that actually don't pay. So, you know, oh, I must be posting three times a week. Yes, there's a reason for that. It tells LinkedIn that you're active and it keeps all of your followers um, engaged in in getting content. If you don't post regularly and you have 11,000 followers, your um, post will get as much interaction and engagement as someone who has 300. Um, So there are things that are important um, to do, but, you know, there's a big push at the moment for, like, sharing selfies and sharing... um, personal things and and then those personal things can be really personal or they can be personally business related but it's interesting someone I'm following at the moment that I I see come up in my post a lot and she gets a lot of interaction she's a stunning girl and uh, full of energy doing something interesting I have known her personally and then I have seen her online I only knew her briefly put on a course that's how I knew her but I actually couldn't tell you what she does in her business. And then when I came through to a LinkedIn profile last week to sign and decide, well, what does she do? I saw one or two words that kind of told me what she did, but there's nothing that's actually driving her expertise for me. There's nothing that's pushing her as a thought leader in her space. Um, so content for content's sake is not okay. Engagement for engagement's sake is not okay. It's just going to be a time vampire. What we want to be doing is sharing really thought provoking content on our topic. Um, and we really need to be positioning ourselves on our topic. Um, a lot of people will either downplay the LinkedIn profile on the role that it pl- plays, or they give very basic, or oh, fill in the headline, fill in your past experience. But actually, there's a strategy to how you fill that in and what you say. And that strategy does come down to personal branding. And it comes down to thought leadership. And it comes down to what is your credibility in this area? And then what is the problem that you solve? And it's not written about you or for you. It's written for your audience. What is in it for them? Nobody is interested in you until you become relevant to them. When they come to your profile, you are a distraction to their day. They're flicking around, probably wasting time on LinkedIn or looking for their own opportunities. Um, And they see your post and think, oh, that's really interesting. Or they see that you've commented on somebody else's comment content and think oh they know something that's that's interesting i'll click through so they come to your profile and they've got seconds you have got seconds with them before they decide this is a higgledy piggledy mess and i don't get what they're about they're clearly not an expert in their field and i don't mean that derogatory they you said something clever in your comment it's interesting it's got their attention you've posted something that's interesting 
does it first question i'm interested in this that's why i've came i've come is what you've commented on and talked about so sensibly what you actually do because it is not what you do i don't care i'm not interested in your profile i'm not interested in you this is irrelevant to me i came because i'm interested in this topic so actually the first thing that I often find myself doing is good. God, that's really interesting. I wonder what they do. And it's the first 49 characters of their headline that's showing up under their name. So it's on the comment, Naomi Johnson. Here's my comment. And these first 49 characters is what's showing. If I can see that what they're talking about that makes a lot of sense is the thing that they do because I can see it in the headline. It's showing those first 49 comments. Now, it's the tick one. This is going to be a good diversion for me because this is a topic I'm interested in. They could be really interesting. Oh, yes, that is their topic. I can see it in the beginning of their headline. I'll click through to their profile. I come through to the profile. Again, is it a higgledy piggledy mess or does it make sense to me? Does it guide me through the profile? Does it show me the direction I should go through with this? I want to, I don't want a sales pitch. I don't want you to assume that I'm your ideal audience. Um, and assuming that I'm your ideal audience cuts out everybody else who are your introducers, your friends, your colleagues that could all introduce you and connect you, you know. Um, I want to see like, what is it that you do? And I want to feel like I've had a conversation with you. Because yeah. when I see your photo, that's like looking at you across the room. When I come over and say, hey, you look like a nice person, let's have a conversation. You tell me your name. That's the name. What do you do? One line. Ah, that's interesting. And then starts the conversation and that's the about section. Right. So, and, and there's a way of writing it that it feels like a conversation that, you know, people can talk to you for two minutes without you wanting to interrupt, you know, and it's writing it that way. It's, if someone wants to interrupt you in that two minutes of reading, then you've lost them because they're in their own train of thought. Um, and then the other thing is about the past experiences in the current experience, for what you're doing now, it's, you know, I've read all of that and I've got it. That's what you're talking about. That's the problem that you solve. That's why you're an expert at it. But can you help me? How will you help me? And so in that current experience, we need to ground the company. This is what the company does. And this is how it's done. And we do it for this type of person. Okay, great. That's me. I'm in the right place. And this is how we do it. Oh, I can see myself doing that. That looks really good. How do I, next question, how would I get in touch? Oh, look, they're offering me um, a really interesting, I'm going to say one-to-one -one there, but a little bit more jazzed up than a one-to-one -one, um, or a scorecard or a something um, that then brings that person into, into having a conversation with you. And there's a real science in how you put that conversation together as well. That's good. That's good. Well, and I was listening to everything that you were saying and it, you know, I, I have a mentor that talks about like when we're doing, because you let, let me back up. You touched upon the part where when they when they put something out of post and it's not really relevant to what they do and you're like lost. Like you're like, they got this post out here, but it doesn't really align. And I think that's what happens with a lot of people in their business as they want to start putting all these things out there, but they don't really quite align with what their messaging is. And the mentor that I've been working with kind of has this idea. He I don't he calls it something else, but basically he says you find many different ways to talk about the same thing. Whatever your whatever it is you're talking about, whatever your niche is, whatever that is in your audience, whatever that one piece is that you're talking about, you find different ways to talk about the same thing because you're driving in on the same message over and over and over. And so I think that is so good because you are on point with that because sometimes you'll look at, at somebody's stuff and you're like, what does this have to like, what does this even have to do with what their what their messaging is or what they're doing? Right. And so it can be mm. confusing for the person out there. And so I do think this is this is good what you said here. And um, all this information was really, really good. I think I think it's yeah. LinkedIn is yeah. a missed art. And I, and I like at the beginning, too, that you said about the networking, because I'm I'm a big in-person networker. And so sometimes I struggle on the other side of it because I'm so used to doing the in-person that the other way I have to force that because I have to work a little harder to do that, even though I know for people online, they feel like that's really easy for me. I'm a face to face person. So that just comes mm -hmm. naturally for me. But I, you're right. I think it is the exact same thing. And something that I was told is that if you would not say something to someone in person, don't say it on LinkedIn or in your social media. It is treated the same way. Yeah, it's your social compass. And again, this goes back to what we were saying at the beginning. And there's always a good reason why we start and say things that isn't there. Um, if you have had a mentor tell you, send this number of messages, this number of messages in a day 
and this is who you should send it to, and this is a template, any one of those three, and it just doesn't sit comfortably with you, it's probably right. It's not feel the fear and do it anyway. It's your social compass going off and saying, I wouldn't walk up to a complete stranger and slap them with this message. I just wouldn't do it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I'd love yes. to like do <laughs> these little skits that you can like act out online stuff, <laughs> like how it really comes across. Um, yeah. yeah, just don't do it. You know, this again, yes, there is a feeling the fear. You are feeling, often it is fear, but often it's social uncomfort. You know, mm -hmm. that's not how you engage. And I, and I think sometimes that is what can make you sit there and go, well, I just don't know what to do then. What do I do? Right. Um, but, you know, this is why I talk about profile, because I could I could have started then and saying what you could do. But all of it will be a time waste if you haven't got the foundations right with the profile first and therefore mm. the structures of the business, because there are three strategies on LinkedIn. You've got your passive, active and proactive. Your proactive is sending um, messages to targeted people that you have found through the search and going after your ideal market. So you're being proactive about it. Your active is right is um, commenting on other people's statuses and posting your own content as well. So you're being active on the profile, the platform. And then your um, passive is your LinkedIn profile. It's just sitting there. Once it's, it's done, it's in place. You want to update it every three, four months, make a few tweaks, make sure you're still feeling good about how it's representing you. Um, so it's passive. So the proactive and the active all come back to the profile. And the profile needs to connect to your sales funnel. Um, and it's interesting, you know, you said a minute ago, you're really good with the in-person stuff and then not with, um, but not so much on the online. My take on that, um, if we had more time together, I would ask you a coaching question around that to pull that out. But the the key thing with it is, is that everything we do on LinkedIn is to drive us off the platform and have a conversation. Right. You know, LinkedIn's really like, don't take people off our platform. If you put YouTube or an external link, we're not going to promote it. We want to keep you on the platform. But for us, what we want to do is get people onto a, into a conversation as quickly as possible. Anything else um, is a complete waste of time. If someone says they're interested in what you do, great. Here's a link to my diary. I'll book you in for a LinkedIn profile and strategy review. I'm not going to sit there and have back and forth, back and forth conversation. Right. It's a complete waste of time. If someone comments and says, I think I need to update my LinkedIn profile, based on what you just said, I'll say, yeah, book yourself in for a conversation. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's all about bringing yeah. it back to a conversation and then you're Absolutely. in your flow then. That's the, and that's the, that's the connector as well. And I think that's one of the things that people get confused about is what is the objective of being on LinkedIn? And I ask people this in a, my LinkedIn profile and strategy sessions. I say, what is your objective here? Oh, I just want to get more followers and more engagement. Okay, cool. But why? But why? Yeah, right. But why? Yeah. Drill down, drill down. And ultimately, the only reason you're on there is to drive new business. And that's, of course, your job seeker, but you're probably not listening to this if that's you. <laughs> um, so your objective is to get new business leads in. What does it take? Not No, sorry, you're, to win new business. If you had a full business of clients, you completely oversubscribed, would you bother with LinkedIn? Probably not, right. because you've got everything you need, right? So what you just don't need to. If um, you were doing really well on another platform and other people were coming in from, you know, wherever, another form of marketing, would you need to bother about LinkedIn? The answer is yes and no. And I've got a really good post about that on my blog, um, just in simple fact of like it backs you up. It makes you look like a well-rounded business. And it's the one platform that can really sum up what you do. And it's in your own voice. Of, it's like people meeting you. It works really, really importantly for you. But if you don't have those things going on and LinkedIn is the platform, and I mean really going on for you, like all the leads that you need that you can yeah. literally forget about it. Very few businesses can forget about it. Um, then LinkedIn is like absolutely vital as a platform and a place to be and engage to, 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 to win new business. To win new business, therefore to book sales appointments. You know, the two go together. There is no taking on a big great client without speaking to them we have to get them onto a phone call or and meet them face maybe meet them face to face 
we have to get that sales appointment in. So everything we're doing on LinkedIn is about getting that sales appointment. Would you agree with that? I do. If you're, yeah. If you're using yeah. LinkedIn, I agree. I mean, there's, yeah. there, I, there's different ways to do some of the, I, I'm working with the mentor. So we're learning a little bit of a different method for getting in clients, but I agree with you on that. That's how we've been taught. And that's how I've always done business is that you do have to get that sales appointment. And then there's the conversion to the selling. So yes, I do agree with yeah. you on that part. Yeah. Yeah, so then you look at your whole, everybody you're connected with, only probably maybe 1% to 10% are your actual ideal clients. Right. So we don't want to go straight in only on our message because obviously we've got that other 90%. Some of them won't, won't be paying any attention and mm -hmm. are not going to refer us or recommend us. But if they see a piece of our content and they comment on it on LinkedIn, it will be, LinkedIn will boost it to their second degree network. So then you're actually getting a higher reach and you're going into all of their, so there's great reasons to be connected with people who aren't your ideal clients, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and also then you've got people who could be affiliates for you, people who can be referrers and introducers. And more and more introductions and things will happen the more you show up on their radar for your topic. And this is why you want to be posting content, really good content on your topic to boost that visibility, to boost people knowing what it is that you actually do so yeah. they can refer you so you can get into their second degree network so the people your idol clients um or people who are just interested in what you're doing um will come and connect with you follow you and therefore receive more of your content all of that being true a portion of those people should be booking one-to-one -one appointments with you um, or inviting you to speak on a podcast or inviting you to do all the connectors that get more people booking in one to one. Sure. So it's all of those things together um, that work. And it's about finding the right combination for you and your business and your business type. Um, but there are some fundamental assets every business needs to have in place in order for it for it to work. Yeah. Well, and I think, Naomi, the, the thing that I like about you is that you had the coaching perspective, like we talked in the very beginning. So you're asking questions. And I think that's, I think that is huge in, in this industry because, you know, let's be honest. I, I think as entrepreneurs, we all think that we have what somebody needs, right? And not everybody wants our stuff. Not everybody's open to it. You know, like I think I'm building this amazing coaching program and I think the whole world needs it to be an effective entrepreneur, but not everybody's going to agree with that. And so I love that you're coming from a place of, you know, let's ask these questions so we can find out what kind of business you have. I mean, there are core pieces that we need to be doing. We know in business there's, you know, like I, I tell everybody, you know, one of the main things I learned in the Mary Kay world was how to book, sell, coach, and recruit. I learned those four yeah. basic things. I can close a person. I can book a person. That's why I get guests on my show. I can do all those pieces, right? But so there are core pieces that we have to do, but we have to navigate each of them within the framework of the business owner and how their business is developed because the strategies yeah. sometimes they're the little nuances can be a little bit different so i love what you're doing and i love that you're asking questions and i can tell just by what you're talking about you're passionate about it. and i think that is huge because i believe that you have to like what you do you got to love yeah. and be be wholeheartedly into what it is because entrepreneurship is not an easy road by any means no. so you're you're a yeah. rock star it, you are a rock star. <laughs> so if our audience, let's say, because they're going to hear this and they're going to think, wow, this girl is just like, man, she just gave us a lot of really good stuff here. I know we could go on for a long time on this, but we don't want to, we don't want to like take all your goodies. We don't want to do all that. We want them to call you. Right. So if our audience wants to connect with you, maybe they want to, you know, learn, maybe they need help. Maybe they want to learn how to get their LinkedIn up to, up to speed. Where do we want to send them? Yeah, okay, absolutely. So the best thing, of course, is always LinkedIn. Uh, Naomi Johnson UK is the little tagline I have on the end. Okay. Um, so people can find me on LinkedIn. But also I have a gift for all of your listeners. Um, so I've spoken about needing certain structures in place um, and to test whether they're working or not. I have an 18 question scorecard that people can come along and take for free. So you just answer the 18 questions and it will pop out the other end, some key advice um, and measure up where they're, they're doing well on different things. And in there, they can actually book in with me for a LinkedIn profile and strategy session if that feels appropriate for that person and they really want to go into it. Um, and then also once you've filled that in, you can download a copy of my uh, book, The Expert Economy as well, which is awesome. it's, it's, it's about LinkedIn, but it's also about those foundations as well and positioning yourself as the go-to expert in your industry. So you get paid for the value that you create. So 
Um, I'd love to give that to your listeners. Um, so the scorecard, the offer for the book and the one-to-one, just go to theprofile.company. So that's the full word, dot company, theprofile.company forward slash star hyphen girls. And of course, we know that girls is spelt with a Z on the end. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is so awesome. I'm going to check it out. I'll make sure too, when we get this ready to go out, it's going to go out here pretty quick. We'll get that on there so they can go take advantage of that. And um, I love that. You got it going on, girl. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> That's why we're the starter girls, right? We like to, this show is all about the starter girls. She's doing all the things. And so we try to get, you know, I try to find people on here that I feel like they can add some value because, hey, we're all, all of us, that, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are other, you know, we've got some other creators and we've got some professionals out there, but I know a lot of us have LinkedIn profiles and people are learning how to navigate these things. And, you know, and when I told you earlier about the social media, I think mine is just laziness, honestly, because I like, I feel like I'm spread thin. I feel like I'm everywhere. So it's like, what am I going to focus on right now? you know, but I love it. I love what you're doing. And I'm so excited that you were able to come on here and share this. And hopefully, you know, some people will hear this and they'll reach out to you. And like I said, we all need to, those of us that are in the, in the starter girls world, we need LinkedIn profiles. So they need to Mm -hmm. check out Naomi and uh, reach out to her. Brilliant. Thank you. Wonderful to be here with you. Absolutely. And we do want to say, of course, to our listeners, you know, enjoy the show. Be sure you go check us out on your favorite podcast platform. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube so we can keep sharing all this awesome content. And uh, Naomi, we'll have to get you back on again and see what's happening. And uh, I know all the things change all the time. We'll have to get an update with you and see what else is happening in your world. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. You guys take care. Be safe. Be kind to one another. We will see you next time.